Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using the Scary Cat Lovely Layers as well as the Mini Fall Florals. Um, I thought I was going to, no I did end up using the Sentiment Scent, I apologize. Um, I looked at the one from last year and I almost used that one, uh, but I did end up going with this one and this one is called Blessings of Fall. And then what you see me doing here is this is all scrap paper. So part of what I did today was I have like a um, like a metal tray, like kind of like an in and out tray that you would see in an office that sits on my desk. And this is where I put my scraps. And so every once in a while I have to go through and kind of categorize them by color. And this mini fall florals is something that I have been, it's been sitting on my desk that I've been wanting to use it um, since the release. Uh, and I decided it was something that I was going to sit down and play around with. But I w had just like gone through all of my scraps. And I don't know about you guys, but there are so many times where I don't even realize how much of a certain card stack like I have cut up. I'm not even gonna tell you how much blue I found y'all. I found a lot of blue. But anyway, um, when you're trying to use up your scraps, uh, sometimes you're not gonna have like the perfect match for the color that you're looking for. But that doesn't mean that you cannot like that you can't use it up. So not all of these were like perfect color matches, but I'm going to show you some ways that you can use um, that to, like you can use them even though they might maybe are not perfection. Um, so here just going through and putting them all down on the different colored cardstock, this saves me time in having to make sure I color all of the white pieces parts. Um, so that way I have them, they're done, they have a base color, and then I just need to add the shading versus having to add all the color start to finish. I use, I think I pretty much used everything I cut except for maybe one little leaf. I think I didn't, one of the little leaves I didn't use, but everything else I, I did use. And some of them I cut multiples of, like I cut two of the cone flowers. Um, I cut both of the little wheat pieces. When you're looking through your scraps and you're you're trying to use them up versus look for that perfect color. Um, lighter colors are going to be your friend. The darker ones will save you from really having to add any shading, um, but the lighter colors are going to be much more useful to maybe add shading to and turn into other colors if you need to. Uh, so just keep that in mind um, when you're, you know, pulling things out. I did, I was, thought I was going to use the, um, well, you'll see it, it when we get there, but I thought I was going to use the cat as well from the Scary Cat set. I didn't, I ended up just using the pumpkin, um, but that one was super cute and it required a lot of black. So while I didn't cut new paper for any of these, some of them were like half sheets or, uh, you know, regular A2 size that I had already cut down and they had just ended up in my scrap pile because I didn't use them yet. So this, if you do have some scrap colors that are all kind of in the right color family, because um, sometimes people, you know, have more paper than they do markers, uh, one of the ways that you can get some dimension, more dimension out of your die cuts um, is by shading with your gray markers. So here I'm going to show you shading them with gray. Now we recently, uh, one of the videos that I did for Honeybee, we talked about warm colors and cool colors. So yellow is a warm color. I'm going to use warm grays to shade it after I've kind of glued it all together. Um, and normally I don't glue them all together until I do all of my coloring, but this was me just kind of having a play with a basically a set that I was super excited to use. Um, so here I'm going in with those warmer gray colors and adding some shading. Now I like bright colors, so I am going to go back over this with the yellows that I would traditionally use. Um, so that way they'll also match my, uh, my wheat. I guess they're wheat. I mean, that's what I... 
That's what I think they are. When I look at them, they make me think of wheat. Um, but you can shade them with your warm grays and then go back over it with just one, like one of the yellow colors. And that can, will kind of bring it back around to its color family. If that removes too much of the shading, which sometimes it does, you know, alcohol markers are transparent. So when you take a lighter color and put it over a darker color, sometimes it'll remove too much color. Um, but you can, uh, you know, just go back in and, and add that shading again with your darkest color. Um, so here I'm putting together the pumpkin and that's when I realized like I should just finish coloring out the sunflower the way that I had intended to color it. Um, so that way we didn't get confused and have to go back and it get forgotten about. So I am going to go in. You'll notice that normally I use a four color blend and for a lot of this, I'm using just three. Sometimes I will show you the whole blend, the whole four color blend, but I do not use all four of the colors and I'll try to remember to point that out. Um, but using colored cardstock, it, you guys have uh, heard me say before, it can be a huge, huge time saver um, for coloring. Now, there are some things, like we didn't use the cat in this one. Um, like we're not going to see that put together. He is done. He is adorable. Um, but I will use him for another card. He just didn't, he just didn't fit well with kind of what I had going on here. But anyway, um, what was I going to tell you about the cat? Oh, his eye, his face. So like his little eyes and his nose all get cut out with the same dye. So for those ones, I probably would do white or a lighter color um, just so that I could just color them all whatever they needed to be. For this little pumpkin, he does have a face to be a jack-o'-lantern. And again, I didn't know if I was going more cutesy or more... Um, you know, kind of like elegant fall. Uh, so I did cut out the little jack-o'-lantern face. I did not end up using it, but I will show you uh, what that would look like if we had. So basically we're just going in. And again, I showed you the four colors. I didn't. I ended up not using the YR07. So it's a YR04, 09, and an E09 to add shading to this. And that is going to um, kind of mimic the same colors that you'll see in my uh, leaves. So that is the jack-o'-lantern face. If I was going to use it, I would have just laid that over top of the pumpkin, held it in place or taped it in place, and um, then kind of inlaid the pieces and then just removed that uh, negative portion of the die cut. So this one, this, these two colors, one is eggplant and I think the other one is iris. And they're both purples, but they're kind of like, meh, not really the same kind of vibe, right? One's super bright, one's kind of dark. Um, and so in order to make this work, because I don't have a scrap of a different color of purple, these are the two purple colors that I have, um, I'm going to use my markers to add some shading to that uh, that brighter purple to kind of add my shading, but also knock it back a little bit so that it will be a nicer shade to pair with that kind of eggplant color and they'll make more sense. And this also does not require having all of the markers because to change the color of them, like you could just go right over top of them, you know, with a, with a different color. For these greens, for the yellow greens, I did shade them with the 67 and the 17 and a little bit of the 03. I never used the 01. Um, but so just adding that, this is the little uh, protea, 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 protea. It's like a desert flower. Uh, this is an anemone. I really, really like this one. And so for this one, I cut all of the pieces parts out of like a plum color cardstock, except for the center. The center, I used that same eggplant scrap because anemones um, traditionally do have more of a, a darker center uh, if they're this particular color scheme, just like white ones have like a purplish black center. Um, and then for the darker greens. I like using a variety of greens. 
because I think it makes things more interesting, but also it helps if you, if you're using scraps and you don't have a lot of several or a lot of a specific color of green, you can mix it up and use different greens. These all come together really easily. Um, you know, there may be just like two, three layers. So that's so nice. And like, I love the Lovely Layer series, but those flowers are sized very generously. So it's hard to kind of use more than one or two together. Um, with these minis, this is this is great because you can combine them with a lot of other elements because they're a little bit more scaled down. So really enjoying using these little, these little minis. For the shading on this anemone, for that very top part, I'm just going to add it to the kind of the base. And some of you may be asking, like, Kelly, when you're using this, like, RV55, that certainly is not dark enough to show up on the cardstock, so why are you using it? The reason that I'm using it is to help blend that color out. The initial darkness that you see when I put the marker down is really just moisture. It's the moisture from the uh, marker, but as that alcohol dissipates, it just, you know, evaporates, it doesn't necessarily make the cardstock any darker, but it does help lift some of the previous color. So for these, both of these little cone flowers, um, we're going to do the um, kind of like plum color, that that pinkish, that, it's like a wine, I guess. No, a raspberry, a mulberry, raspberry. It's definitely more pink. I think a wine is a more red Um I could be just making all of this up. <laughs> um, and then the other one is that same kind of purple combination that that we have in our scraps that we're making work. Um, so a little bit, a little bit of mini story time, I guess. Um, today is my birthday. And um, this sometimes my birthday is super close to Labor Day. It's, you know, Labor Day is always like the first Monday of September, but it just depends on where in the week my birthday falls. So like if my birthday falls on like a Tuesday, you know, that Labor Day isn't until almost a full seven days later. But this time my birthday falls on Saturday. So Labor Day is Monday and there's tons of really good sales going on, by the way. Um, I will try to update my craft deals page. I cannot make any guarantees though, because I have a lot of other things going on. I will try to get those sales um, over there together for you guys. But if not, like Honeybee isn't necessarily having a uh, Labor Day sale, but they always have um, sales going on in their clearance section. And they're really great ones in there because they carry more than just their own stamp styles and stencils. They carry other scrap or scrapbooking card making uh products they um there's always new stuff being added and it's always different so sometimes it's ink sometimes it's um organizational stuff sometimes it's um you know inks or markers or um embellishments i think i saw over there today there was like a sequin uh embellishment mix but anyway those it's always being added to so if you check those consistently um at the top it'll have a sort by and you can just change that to newest to oldest and then you'll always see the newest things that have been added in there um so that way if you've already been through all 28 pages <laughs> of sale items you don't have to go through it again um but anyway there's always good stuff over there so for my birthday um we typically will do all of our summer birthdays on my side of the family because my dad is a week after me and my brother-in-law is just like three days before me. So we usually do all of ours together. Well, <laughs> we also host Labor Day. So now we are I'm just like, we'll just wait and do the summer birthdays until my dad's birthday because otherwise we were going to be doing Labor Day right in the, like my birthday, Labor Day, dad's birthday. I was like, that's, it's crazy. That's too much. Um, but I did do, because I'm the only August birthday on Eric's side of the family. Uh, the other ones, we have July birthdays, which they could just lump me in there. I, I wouldn't even mind. Um, honestly, I never thought about it until now, but 
Eric's dad, his brother, and then our sister-in-law. They're all July birthdays. So I'm the only one who falls in August. Um, and so they came over yesterday to do the Taylor family birthday celebration, which was very nice. And it was good to see everybody. Um, and then today, really, I didn't, we didn't do much of anything. Um, my husband made me breakfast, which was very sweet. But I had told him, I'm like, dude, I'm good. We're, we're doing so many birthday things and all this other stuff that we have going on. Like, you, you don't have to go out of the way. Basically, I just don't want to have to make dinner, uh, which he did. We're, we're ordering in. And in fact, I'm doing this while I'm waiting for uh, the food to get here. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we have that going on. And then uh, the Labor Day, do you guys do, does, ever, does everybody still do cookouts? We do. I, I mean, we always do for those like Fourth of July, Memorial Day, Labor Day. I mean, and if you think about it, sometimes it's a little morbid that we're doing cookouts for those days, but I guess we are. It is what it is. Let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. So here, um, I wanted to have that really nice, um, like fall foliage colors incorporated into our little bouquet. So I picked some lighter colors. Remember I talked about that, how it's easier to kind of transform them. And I took the yellow one and blended it out to a bit of green. The yellow one, you can take any direction. You can take it orange, you can take it red, um, you, you can take it any direction. And then I used those pinks on the orange ones to mimic the colors that you see in the pumpkin. So here I've kind of laid everything out um, I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging. On the left-hand side there, these are also scraps. So I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I make backgrounds or I have like negative pieces, like this arch is a negative piece of my die cut. And it's it can be used for another card and I am too cheap to throw it away, <laughs> especially when it's like metallic specialty card stock like this. Like I'm not throwing that away. It's not, it's not happening. Um, so... I just put them in that same like scrap pile. So when I was going through, I tried to pull out as many as I could. I also pulled out two white ones because um, in the beginning I showed you that vintage layering labels and I already had two white ones that were cut um, probably because I used the negative portion. Um, and then I saved the positive for another card. But anyway, like if you use, if you create those things and you don't end up using them, then you can, of course, you know, incorporate them. Like truly this whole card was made out of scraps <laughs> because I just, it's always building. I'm, I hardly ever throw car colored cardstock away. So once I had everything arranged the way I wanted it, I glued it together. I'm going to move over and do the sentiment. Now, because I'm incorporating the gold in both the background and the frame piece, I decided to stamp this in our uh, metallic gold pigment ink and then heat emboss it on black. So just treating with my anti-static tool, um, stamping it. I like to stamp it down twice with very light pressure and then uh, add my embossing powder. I'm letting it preheat before uh, I bring it to the paper just to minimize warping. And then I will cut it out with its coordinating die. So you're, we're about to switch over to, to making the background and you're going to notice it's a completely different video. You may have actually already seen the video. These are the Bloom with Grace sunflowers um, that I... I illustrated for this release for Honeybee, and that's a whole other video. If you missed it, I will, I can link it below. Um, but I originally created this background when I was making these cards, and I did not use it. So I still wanted you to see how I made it. Here, I have put my reinker. my ink pad did need to be re-inked, and normally you would put that on there and you would just let it sit until it absorbs in. I put it in there, and then I kind of worked it in with my little brayer because I wanted to use the brayer on my uh, 3D, the fall leaves 3D embossing folder. And I put it on the part that was raised up. 
which means when a, I put my paper in, which is just like some craft cardstock, uh, when I put my paper in, it will press the gold part down into like the veins and texture of the leaves. Um, you, When you put the paper in, you do want to try to move it as minimally as possible so you're not kind of smearing the ink all over. And then I always tape it at the bottom with some of my low-tack tape just so that way when I run it through, I'm not risking it moving. And that is how we made that little scrap background. Then for the frame, I am going to pop this up. Um, this is Honeybee's um, foam. Like it's like their foam tape, but it's very thin, which is kind of nice. So it gives a little bit of lift and like some extra dimension, but it's not anything that you're not going to be able to get into an envelope or that you'll have to pay more to mail. So um, I'm using that. Now I should have put my pumpkin down first so that I didn't have to try to then rip up my frame later, uh, but I didn't. And now I will have to do that. Um, here I realized, oh, it's not going to fit. I'm going to have to pull it up. Um, that is my own fault. That's my own doing. So anyhow, um, so we are doing Labor Day on Monday and my nephew, I think I told you guys this, my nephew um, who just recently moved to go to school to be a dentist, um, he is always like the eater of the pasta salad. I always make pasta salad, but I always make extra because he loves it and I send it home with him. So I told my sister, I was like, I'm a little sad. I'm going to have to like... I'm going to have to adjust how much pasta salad I make because Jacob's not going to be here to eat it. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but it'll be good to see everybody. And then the following weekend, we will do everybody's birthday. Um, so it actually works out really nicely because I am, I think you guys probably know this uh, as well. I'm kind of like the cake maker, though my sister-in-law made my cake for um, the Taylor family birthday celebration and it was delicious. It was chocolate on chocolate and she did a wonderful job. Um, so, but since I'm the cake maker, that means like people feel obligated to make, so I don't have to make my own birthday cake. So when we're celebrating everybody else's, it actually works out really nicely because then I can make cake for my dad or my dad and my brother-in-law. And um, then there still is cake to celebrate everybody's birthday. And there's more than enough. You don't, we certainly don't need three cakes. Um, so that way I can kind of get away from having to make my own birthday cake. Um, do you guys make your own cakes? Do you just order them? I mean, I, I always, or, or, well, I order peanuts now because he wants ice cream cake, so I don't make his anymore, but everybody else's I make. I like baking. Uh, I know that's not for everybody. Some people prefer cooking to baking or, uh, but I, I mean, I don't mind either, honestly. Baking's more enjoyable, but, you know, eating the baking is also more enjoyable if you ask me. Anywho, this scrap was slightly smaller than an A2 size card, so I just adhered it to a piece of black so that it was it had a little bit of a border on the left and right hand side. Um, and then to finish it off, I am going to add some white gel pen highlights, um, a little bit of shimmer with my, um, what is that? My Zig Clear Wink of Stella. And then um, also some rhinestones. The rhinestones are from, I think it's the spooky, Sweet and Spooky gem stickers. They're like a yellowish, orange, green. They're really great. They they change color. They're more like iridescent. I really like those ones. Those are so fun. Iridescent gems are so fun. Um, so for the line on the um on the shoe, like on the boot, uh, like that little added detail, I did use a point. 08. Um, for everything else, I used a 10 um, because the 10 is just a bit of a thicker line, but the 08 fits really nicely into the impression that's left from the die cut. Um, so that is why I used that one. The 08s do have a tendency to dry up. I'm sure you saw me kind of playing around with one and then having to pull out another. They do dry up a little bit faster. 
So anyway, that is the whole card. I hope this inspires you to get out your scraps. Even if it's not the perfect color, you can kind of change things up with coloring them. Thank you. And, oh, I did it with markers, but you could also do it with inks. I should have mentioned that like way earlier. Sorry. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me. I will catch you on the next video. Bye.